And welcome to another fabulous and professional episode of Retrovaniacs. As always, I'm Jeremy Parmentier, here with Jeremy Gregory. Hey, guys. And Billy Holiday. Hello there. And, uh, and this week we're going to look at a listener request for Alien 3 for the Super Nintendo and Genesis, but more accurately, the Super Nintendo. But before we do that, Billy, what have you been playing since last episode? Well, I've taken an unexpected turn. I, uh, of course, uh, got, the, got the NES uh, SNES Classic and, and hooked it up. Uh, and playing through Secret of Mana, but I fucking got detoured because I uh, may or may not have put more games on the classic than what it came with. Uh, <laughs> I woke up one morning and they were all there, uh, and, and I assure you, I own all of them in cartridge form. Uh, but but because of that, and uh, and I shit you not, I'm 18 hours into fucking Super Black Bass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, it's not even a pun. I'm fucking hooked. This damn <laughs> game has got hold of me like it was, it was 20 years ago. I, I'm surprised I put it down after we reviewed it, but I did. I legitimately put it down. I uh, didn't think I was going to play it again for a long time. And now here I am every day after work. I'm, I'm playing Super Black Bass or I'm playing Super Bomberman 2, one or the other. And one or the other. All the new games I've gotten recently, they're sitting. They're, they're sitting while I, I just either cast out or just lay down those damn bombs. Just uh, <laughs> I don't know what's happened. Uh, but yeah, that's where I am right now. I, I don't know if I'm in a great place or an awful place. Well, I also, uh, you know, because you told me how easy it was. Uh, hey, I, managed- I didn't. Huh? Managed I told to... you something. I don't think I told you this. I think you said you woke up and it was there, and then and then uh, you blacked out for a few hours, and then I had this cool stuff. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I uh, I also managed to find a few extra games on my Super NES Classic. It is mm-hmm. uh, apparently a fairly easy process since I can't recall how I did it uh, or mm-hmm. if I did it at all. Uh, but I definitely mm-hmm. added games that I must obviously own uh, in cartridge form. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually just took all the games we've reviewed and put them on there. So I have. Uh, I've got Young Merlin. I've got that Super Black oh, Bass. I uh, still haven't caught a fish, even when I have it on the comfort of my own television. Uh, but the other things I've been playing a lot of is I've gotten, for whatever reason, uh, every couple months I get a bug up my ass to play Mad Max because I've never finished it because I want to do everything. So I'm back mm. into that. Like I'm wasting hours and hours of time just playing Mad Max, and it's incredible. It's so good. I always I, I own that. And I've I've like come close to to actually getting into it several times, but I, I've never actually. I, I think I've done the first mission, and then I'm just like, I'm gonna come back to this, and I still have not. Well, it's it's definitely a slow starter. It's it gives you a lot of really cool abilities that it makes you earn, because otherwise it would be too much at once. And and in, instead, it means that you have to earn them so slowly. At the very beginning of the game, you're you're pretty weak, and you can't do all the things you think would be really really cool. But I'm probably. 30 or 40 hours into it again and man i i'm taking on convoys it's amazing it's incredible <laughs> one man army uh well, i guess two man uh, but it's still it's so good so i've been playing a lot of that and of course the game we're going to talk about this week but jeremy what have you been playing um well i i i guess i'm the only person that's actually playing any modern games at all this uh this time well, I, unlike PS4. you guys i did not uh acquire a super nes classic i still have not seen it anywhere but you know i really haven't been looking that hard and I ended up grabbing uh, the new Call of Duty, mm. and I, yeah, I I skipped it last year. Uh, I just oh, did yeah. not really – what I saw of it, I, I didn't really want to play it. And so I was just like, you know what? Battlefield 1's out. I'm going to do that. That's what I did. I played Battlefield 1 for, until, like, summer of this year. 
as my multiplayer game. And since then, I really haven't had much of anything to kind of be like, okay, I want to sit down, I want to you know chill out and shoot some people after mm-hmm. after work or whatever. And uh, this new Call of Duty is, of course, going back to World War II. And so I was like, oh, I'll try it out. You know, I, I, I was a big fan of, of the first few Call of Duties back in the day. And, and to see that go back to, uh, to what it used to do, I was genuinely interested. And uh, it's pretty good. It's really, if you like uh, the original Black Ops, uh, it reminds me a lot of that. It doesn't remind me of the older World War II games, not even like World at War. Uh, it just it just kind of has this really solid black ops kind of feel to it, and I, it's it's kind of hard to explain. But uh, I guess it, it's a it's a more simple shooter than what the more futuristic uh, the ones that have been lately. Uh, there's mm-hmm. no weird homing missiles. You don't have lasers going everywhere. There's not crazy fucking spaceships flying around the level killing everybody. Uh, you, now it's just you know you've you've got very old school World War II style guns, and and that's what you got to deal with. And I've been enjoying it. I really enjoy it. it. The only thing I don't like about it is that they've kind of went destiny with it a little bit and put in this hub area where you can kind of walk around Normandy Beach. It's like after the Allies have just uh, come onto Normandy Beach, and uh, it, that's supposed to be where the social area of the game is. And it's just a big fucking mess. It takes forever to load. There's no real reason to get in there because everyone kind of looks the same. Like I've seen people that are very high level and got some, some, I guess, the epic stuff, but it's World War II. I mean, you can't look crazy. Nobody's running around with like wings or anything. You know, it's just you're wearing different uh, uniforms, different color uniforms. It, it doesn't make any sense why it's in there besides being able to drop loot boxes on Normandy Beach, which is just <laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, it's it's just a, a really strange thing that they put in there, and it 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 just makes the act of it getting into the game and getting into an actual multiplayer match take longer than it sh- should. Now you can do things like get like contracts, uh, you know, kill twenty five people in team death mi- match in the next like twenty minutes or something. But in previous games, you could all do that from the same multiplayer menu. You didn't have to load into this big uh, thing that they've got going on now. It just I don't like it, but the game itself, the multiplayer uh, portion of it, is very solid. It's just not the kind of series I end up getting myself into. I, I know if I put enough time into those things, I would definitely get into it, but since I don't get into things on the ground floor with those, I feel like I walk in and just get smoked, so I don't I don't enjoy them. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, I, I, that's kind of got to where uh, Overwatch is with me as well. Like, I've, <laughs> I guess I have not played competitive Overwatch enough to the point where uh, now I can keep up. Uh, things things have changed. They have made my uh, Roadhog character a piece of shit uh, <laughs> since last time I played it, which that was my main character that I used in that game. You know, yeah. I was pretty damn good with him. And since they, they nerfed him, I have not been able to do anything in that game. I just get, like you, I just get smoked every single time. Yeah. Um, but Call of Duty, I'm always fairly competitive at. I, I've always been pretty good at it, no matter how good the other teams are and i always have fun with it it doesn't get on my nerves like overwatch does when i'm doing badly Uh, so i'm gonna stick with it and and see how it goes well this week's game not multiplayer uh, but definitely got myself smoked several (laughs) times playing this one Uh, alien 3 for the super nintendo Like I had said at the start of the show, this was a listener request. Uh, This is from a listener named George, uh, who actually gave us a call, and this was his reasoning. Hey guys, it's George. Um, I'm a big fan, and I've listened to all the episodes, and I noticed that you guys hadn't covered an Aliens game yet, and I'm a big fan of the series. I've probably played all of them, um, with the exception of one or two very early ones, and... I didn't know if you guys would cover one. Um, I'd like to see what you guys thought. Yeah, this is um, this is probably about the uh, the most interesting. If you can't get the uh, Aliens vs Predator, or I'm sorry, uh, Alien trilogy on the PlayStation, uh, then these two games, at least the Super NES version of Alien Three, is is a pretty neat game. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about it as we go along, but uh, 
Yeah, uh, this was a. Uh, I played this one at the time. I was a big fan of the franchise, and and loved the third movie, even though that it was a uh, not a well loved film by any means. It, it, even though it had fucking Charles S. Dutton, Rock was in it. I, I don't think Rock's in this game though, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I rented this one a couple times, and you know, just based on it was it was it was Aliens, uh, and I. I was keen to to you know movie tie-ins then. I, I knew what was up with most of them, uh, but I picked this one up anyway. And we'll talk about it as we go along. That it's uh, it was, uh, for the most part, a pleasant surprise. Alien Three came out originally on the Genesis uh, in 1992, right around the same time the movie released. Uh, like Billy said, Alien Three is, uh, if it's lucky, the third best Alien movie. Uh, only because everything <laughs> after it has been pretty subpar. Um, oh yeah, it got worse. It, it's, it's, it actually isn't a bad action movie. I think the problem is just it's not what everyone wanted from from the Aliens franchise. But that's okay. Uh, I actually think it turns into a, a fairly acceptable game uh, background uh, compared mm-hmm. to say the the first one or the second one, which would still be and have been uh, fairly good Aliens games. But uh, you know, one based on the original Alien would be much more of a a direct horror game than this was. So mm-hmm. th- this ended up being much more uh, exciting than I expected. Uh, for the a movie that that honestly I think I might have watched from start to finish one time and, and I tried to watch clips of it for this and I got bored with just clips yeah Dan yeah. I wasn't the biggest alien three fan I was a huge fan of aliens of course you know that was that was the game or that was the movie I always wanted a game of mm-hmm. and uh, to see alien three out there you know I, I didn't really know what to expect when I rented it because you know the the back of the box it, it looked like a, a pretty nice looking game. But it really didn't go into detail exactly as to what it was. If it was just a straight up action game, I would have, it would have been fine. But it it turns out there's actually a lot more to it, and it, it like you said, it, it's a surprising game once you once you get into it. Well, originally I thought we might want to do both the Genesis and the Super Nintendo and kind of compare them. But unlike uh, when we did that for what RoboCop vs Terminator and uh, Batman Robin. This one, the Genesis game, you can tell that the Super Nintendo game has the same starting point. They just added a lot of extra little things. So it's almost not worth discussing both of them as a comparison, except to say that the Genesis version uh, is is more of a straight arcade 2D action game where you're rescuing people. Uh, if you rescue enough people, you get to go to the end of the level. It is kind of a maze, but it's it's one big map per stage. It's it's much more of a direct arcade feeling action game than the Super Nintendo one that I think we really need to focus on, because uh, the Super Nintendo one is it's involved. I mean, I, I'm actually yeah. pretty excited about uh, you know when we started playing it. I was like, this is this is way better than I expected for the purpose <laughs> of of actually talking. I was like, what are you going to say about just running around shooting aliens for half an hour? But actually, uh, this game. It takes it to a different level where each it's got six levels total, but each level is a series of missions and you have to do one mission at a time. You can't take on several missions at once. Uh, and to start a mission, you have to, to find a terminal, a computer terminal, uh, which is on the main map screen you start each level in. But those missions require you to go into uh, a bunch of different areas. There's doors throughout the main uh, map screen you start in uh, that are the first level is, is very straightforward. It's basically a hallway with some doors in it, and you have to use those. You know, it'll be a door to uh, cell block seven or a door to uh, furnace area two or something like that. But it tells you when you go into the room what the room is, and it also tells you on the overhead map you can access from those terminals what those areas are. But then the missions it tells you uh, to, to take in those rooms are actually uh, not just, you know, at first I was like, oh, these are all going to be, uh, hey, I shot, you know, go kill aliens in this room. Go kill aliens in this room. Go ki- so then what, what fun is that? Uh, but actually, there's very, very few that are just go kill aliens. Uh, most of them are uh, either rescuing people or fixing parts of the ship or, well, I guess it's a prison ship, but still fixing parts of the prison uh, or uh, killing alien, um, the egg sacs, and, and making sure you stop aliens from spawning. Uh, so it actually has a lot to it. But the map itself, to get back uh, to that, is very, very involved. Yeah, and you only get uh, access to that map when you're at the terminal. Mm -hmm. So you have to do your homework whenever you're selecting these missions. And back when I first started playing it, I you know I wasn't expecting this. I didn't get any instructions with the game because apparently someone you know as soon as anybody rents a game, they immediately just flush them down the toilet. 
because I never saw any fucking instructions with my games. So the first time I rolled up into that room and there was that terminal there, I was just like, what is this? What's going on here? You know, it's got these little things that you can pick and, you know, it tells you what you need to do. And then you come up with this big ass blueprint of, of the, uh, the, the entire map of what you're around and you have to map your way out. Uh, you have to, you know, it tells you what, what rooms, uh, the objectives are in. So you actually have to go and find, uh, which doors you need to go into, uh, where in that room, uh, the objective is, uh, and then go about it. And it's, it's, a it's kind of interesting that, that it's in a game like this, because much like I, I was expecting something like the Genesis version, mm-hmm. which is very much just go in, rescue people, get to the end of, end of the stage. We're good to go. You know, that's, that's all you really need in an aliens game. But this one, it, it really tried to do a lot more with the objectives. Yeah, this is one of those. I'm surprised uh, there's not a a you know twenty twenty uh, some year old notebook sitting around with with maps of this game drawn in it. Uh, yeah, and you you go to the terminal, you look up, and you see it's not just going to be run from left to right uh, shooting. I thought you know the first time I played this and. And not remembering a lot of the gameplay when I got into it this time, I thought it was going to be more of a more of a contra, uh, you know, run and gun. And but no, there's some there's some depth to it. Uh, and there's like Jeremy P said, there's different things to do. Uh, but I would say I didn't I didn't think still with the uh, the missions it was varied quite enough. Um, and it got a little tiresome. Uh, the 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 just running around handyman Ripley. <laughs> fixing fixing every damn thing um nobody uh, maybe that's why aliens three the movie tank nobody liked the uh, the 10 minute scenes of, of ripley changing fuses and <laughs> welding doors and whatnot um I, I, i'm glad it wasn't just kill everything you know kill all the aliens pretty much but but i still thought it could have used a little more variety that being said i'm i'm not original enough to tell you what they could have done instead uh but yeah i still found the missions got a little old after a while well, they definitely repeat themselves. I mean, there's only really mm-hmm. um, you know, five different mission types, and that's really stretching it. It's probably closer to two, but mm-hmm. uh, I found a way to kind of uh, break it out into five groups. So um, the missions are, as I kind of said earlier, you know, the, clear out the eggs from the aliens, and th- mm-hmm. those most of the time it tells you to go to a specific room or rooms. Uh, that's what also make, what makes some of these missions a little harder than you'd think, is it goes to separate areas it, a mission doesn't just go to one room sometimes it's go to two different rooms uh, or in some cases you have to go to one room but through two different sides because there's a wall in the middle of the room that separates uh, mm-hmm. that whole map so you have to actually come at it from two different angles um so yeah it's clear out the the alien eggs uh help rescue prisoners uh, most of the time that ends up just being the mission i like the most because i feel like it's easy to find the prisoners real quick and mm-hmm. um and the eggs while the eggs are fairly easy um to, to wipe up most of the eggs. There are some rooms where they have eggs, specifically the alien rooms that look like they're from an alien spaceship as opposed to a prison planet that, that makes it very hard sometimes to see other aliens while you're killing mm-hmm. these eggs. So, um, so yeah, clear up the eggs, rescue prisoners, fix different items on the ship with your welder, and that's what Billy mm-hmm. was just mentioning. That I'd say that's half the missions in the game. It's, you know, run to this room and find this panel and stand in front of it. And that... <laughs> <laughs> That's the exciting, yeah. <laughs> uh, exciting part of using the welder is holding down a button while the while Ripley welds. Uh, and then uh, another mission that's very similar to that uh, is to get an item from one room and take it to another. Most of the time, it's a battery uh, or a power pack for a another computer uh, to take it to another area. And then the later on in the game, starting with the third area of missions, uh, you get missions to kill mother aliens. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not the queen alien, uh, but the mother aliens, which are bigger than the the aliens that you'll see throughout the ship. The other forms of the alien, um, those are the ones that look the most like the traditional alien. I think is the mother yeah. aliens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, but thankfully in here you get some you get some pretty hefty firepower on this game. Uh, you get uh, the flamethrower, which is just a, a fucking favorite of mine. You can jam that thing the entire way through the game, as long as you don't run out, you're you're good to go. Uh, you got like the, the standard machine gun and a, a grenade launcher. And what did you guys think about the, the, the controls for this one? You don't scroll through your weapons. Uh, they're all mapped out to their own button, uh, which, you know, has caused me to fucking hit the wrong button and waste some ammo here and there. But, but I hadn't seen a game where you didn't scroll through weapons. They're all there, uh, you know, on Y, X and, and A, I believe B with a B for jump. Uh, I thought that was unique. I hadn't seen that in a game. 
Yeah, that was I, I, it, it actually helps a lot because there are definitely times where if you do have to scroll through, uh, mm-hmm. especially at the, the later uh, missions where there is just shit coming at you all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you had to scroll through to get back to your flamethrower, or get over to the grenade launcher, it would have been an issue. But just mm-hmm. being able to press that button uh, for whatever I wanted was was great. Well, the the I didn't mind the control that way. I actually liked that they were all their own button as opposed to mm-hmm. scrolling because uh, I think scrolling, even though you do, there is like a, a slight delay. If you're using, say, the machine gun and you want to switch to the flamethrower, once you push the flamethrower button once, it's not like immediately you're shooting flame out. You yeah. see it like mm-hmm. switch to that weapon and then you start using the flamethrower. So I think it still has a kind of a cycle to it, but it's not cycling through with one button. I, I would not have liked as much at all. And I don't know if the Genesis version does that. Uh, since I did not actually play more of it than just to see what it was. Um, but with three buttons, I imagine they had to, unless jump is up or something. Um, the the weapons on this, you did mention you get three different weapons. We didn't really get into the specifics. Uh, one, they're very limited. I mean, yes, you get a lot of firepower, and in the early levels, there's pickups everywhere uh, mm-hmm. to help you with, with your missions. Also, most of the time, if you go into a room, say if you're in a hallway and you go into a weapon room, it kind of respawns those weapons. So if you're in the right area, you can kind of stock up. But you do have a limited amount of all the weapons that you can carry. A flamethrower just has one canister of flame. I don't know. I guess it's gas. What else would it be? Flame juice? That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. <laughs> uh, but basically, a container of gasoline that attaches to the, uh, the flamethrower. Uh, you can have, what, 10 clips from the machine gun and 10 sets of rocket launcher rounds. Uh, I think that's... Or the grenade launcher. So you can get all the, the weapons in there and kind of stock yourself, but... But specifically that flamethrower, it's a great weapon. It's especially for parts where you're in narrow areas. There's parts of the game where you're going to go through air vents. Uh, annoyingly, uh, in some later levels, how much you're going to be in those air vents. But those that flamethrower is key in those areas because it yes. actually goes out and uh, in like a cone effect. So if there are uh, alien uh, creatures, the face huggers or the chest bursters climbing on the floor or the ceiling... You can't hit that with just the machine gun unless you're constantly moving up and down and up and down while you're firing. The f- the the flamethrower, if you push it further back in the on the screen from where you are, it goes out enough of a cone, it kills everything in those in those chambers. I would say that's the best best sixteen bit flamethrower, hands down. Uh, and it's also just one of those weapons that uh, it, it just makes you feel like a badass just running around with that and and just flamethrowing everything. Uh, it it really just kind of makes that game to me. It, one thing I think of any time that I recall playing this game, it is running running around with that flamethrower, just going constantly. Well, and you need it because the aliens, uh, in all forms, in the early in the early levels, you'll see a lot of the face huggers and the chest bursters, and I guess they're in the the manual calls them developing aliens, but they're basically like half half sized little aliens. They don't do all the things that the full blown alien forms do. Uh, they're in the first level all over the place. I think there's one or two full-size alien uh, creatures in the first map area. But even in that early level, those those face huggers and the chest bursters come out nonstop. Like they're literally, mm-hmm. if you sit in a room, especially if there's eggs there, if there's if there's eggs, you can see them spawning from the eggs. But even when there aren't eggs there, they're just constantly just spawning and running along the floor. Uh, later on in levels, the face huggers will start jumping at you and climbing grabbing onto your face which means they not only hurt you when they grab onto your face but they hurt you when they let go of your face uh so those are actually very very dangerous and they cause you to fall off ladders jump backwards they're a giant pain in the ass uh so you need that firepower you need to be able to constantly um i found myself and even in some of the early levels just kind of you have to crouch down you can't just fire straight because you won't hit those things in the ground so you have to crouch down and then kind of slowly march your way across the level and i would Mm -hmm. just tap on the machine gun because the machine guns like to kill the face burst uh, the, the, the face huggers uh, so I was mm-hmm. just tapping on that machine gun but even doing that if you're not careful I run out of machine gun ammo a lot so I would I would do that a lot and then save my uh, flamethrower for if I knew I was going to be dealing with eggs or if I if I was running low on the other bullets I would switch to that because it's it's so good but it, again that's another one it runs out you're done it does nothing if it's out of gas uh, it, it, you can't you know, hit people with it. You have no melee attacks and whatsoever. So you got to make sure you keep those three ammos together. And the the grenade launcher I found to be uh, it's great against aliens and not great against anything else because it's too hard to aim. Mm-hmm. Yes, especially if it's if it starts hitting the floor and it's just bouncing around. You know, it will ricochet off fucking everything if you don't hit it, it hit the thing dead on. And it, it can be kind of kind of hard to wrangle if if you're not making direct hits with it. 
Well, thankfully, it doesn't hurt you when it misses, though. It's not like it right. can explode and hurt you. That would be a disaster, especially in those uh, in the vents systems you have to go through later. Yeah, and and we should probably make, mention that this isn't a very fast-paced action game. No. Like this is kind of a, a slower moving kind of it's it's, it's kind of weird the the pace of this game uh you know you're you hear about all these weapons flamethrower machine gun you're probably thinking like contra and it is not that at all like uh, ripley moves at a very deliberate pace and like you were saying like you know crouching down doing the little walk that's not very fast at all but you have to make your way very deliberately through these rooms because that's about the only thing you can do uh, the, the game is just a it does not want you to to do things very fast. Otherwise, you're just going to get swamped. Everything will be uh, all around you, and then you just can't just can't play it like that. Yeah, and I mean that's the thing. You have to you have to adapt to that because you give someone all these guns in a video game, uh, their instinct is just to run fucking roughshod through the thing. And you learn pretty quick you're not going to get too far. You have to take your time with this thing, uh, and this is why I mean. I don't know how quickly other people are getting through this game, but it took me a while because I was just moving so fucking slow getting through it. And that's not a bad thing. I, I'm not saying that, uh, that, that uh, the game's boring by any means or anything like that. It's enjoyable moving along at that pace and, and having to be strategic uh, with, with what you're doing and, and having to keep a fucking eye out. And you can definitely be tense too. I mean, yes, you get low on, yes. on health. You're just, you're creeping through there. Just like, Oh shit. <laughs> Face huggers going to come out of here. I'd- but yeah, it, it's. I mean, it does the the theme of the game really well uh, as far as being a, a tense kind of horror style, uh, or based on a, a horror movie. Yeah, and you don't get that until yeah, you get down to that point where ammo might be low, health might be low, and you know that the next hit's going to do it. And mm-hmm. yeah, that ass is clenched up. But uh, I got speaking of how Ripley moves, what about that fucking jump? Oh man, that jump! I've got troubles with this jump. I've got a lot of troubles with it. Possibly it's, the floatiest jump I, I've seen in a long time. It's floaty and uh, and it's abnormally high. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's abnormally high. But I, I think the, the my biggest gripe with the jump is any other game I've ever played. When you hit the jump button and you're not moving, you yep. just jump straight up in the air. Yes. Yeah. She she uh, not to be fucking just thrown in there with every other person's ever jumped in a video game. Doesn't jump straight up. But but does a little bit of a forward jump, and this fucked me over on more than one occasion. Well, there's not a lot of platforming in this, but there's more than no. you'd expect, and and unfortunately, uh, there's a good deal of these these screens where you need to use platforms to kind of go all the way up to the top of the map and then around a big wall, or mm-hmm. uh, you know, to to get to a specific platform, you need to get to you know, a terminal you're supposed to weld or whatever. So you definitely need to land on those platforms. And and if you're, you're right, when you're moving and you jump, it jumps like you'd expect. And it's a little floaty, but you can control it. It's not too bad. But yeah, the standing still jump, uh, I can't tell you how many times I jump and I get to the very edge of the platform, like on the other side, and I would walk off. Like, that's excellent. <laughs> and normally it's not a big deal. But again, you know, you brought up that it's pretty tense if you're running low on supplies and health. You get one life. This game mm-hmm. does not fool around. You don't get three lives. Uh, if you... The, the only save spots in the game essentially are passwords you get at the end of each level. So you have seven, uh, six to eight missions per each level, and you have to clear all those missions without dying, or else you have to start the whole damn thing again from a password. So it's And you may be wondering how the hell you even do that, but there are uh, supply rooms scattered throughout those maps that you can go back to and, and refill things. Uh, so you're not just completely left to die, mm-hmm. uh, but... It, yes, you really have to be careful about what you're doing. Well, and the early maps don't make that as as obvious, which I think is a good right. thing. I mean, if the first level was as hard as I, I only got to, there are six sets of levels, and I got honestly to level four before mm-hmm. I started doing some safe space or safe state mess, and and I ended up just being like, let me just watch the end of this because these appear to be all the same. Uh, but the first the first two maps really weren't bad. Uh, as far as laying everything out for you. You you were able to kind of walk from the terminals to find the rooms you needed to fairly quickly. Uh, You didn't have to do a lot of jumping between rooms to get to the room you want to do. For example, if you're in in, uh, the main hallway and you want to go to, let's say, the medic bay, you don't have to go through 
this tunnel, then this tunnel, then this tunnel, and that finally gets you mm-hmm. to the medical room. That happens a lot more starting in map three and four. And and map four had a bunch of stuff where there was only two terminals for the whole map. A lot of the, the right. early maps had three or four terminals. So you could kind of find the place to start and or turn in your missions uh, almost anywhere you were. Uh, starting with map three, it really became the issue where I had to pick a mission on this terminal that's overall all the way on the top left of the map. And then I, and it tells me that I have to go to, you know, medical bay and the weapons room. And those are in two opposite sides of the map that I have to take two different sets of tunnels to get to. And I can't turn in the mission easily. As soon as I'm with either one of these, I kind of have to jump back through all these same hoops to get back to the terminal to t- just to turn in the mission to then get the next mission, which may have me go back to the same damn rooms. So yeah. there, there was a lot of... Uh, just manipulating the map and getting where you need to do that. Yes, it's great to have the supply rooms and you definitely want to know where they are, specifically the medical room and the weapons room. But in a lot of these, these later missions, it's almost like you have to take a side mission anyway, just to refill your supplies. Cause you're not going to mm-hmm. make it if you're not paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. And at stage four, uh, it got a little, it, it, it doesn't have multiple levels uh, like the other one. It, it's, it's one big level. But uh, that is when you just got to fucking uh, rely on those air ducts. And I just, I had the hardest time wrapping my head around this stage. I, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was late. I don't know if I'm just too fucking stupid to play these games anymore. I just, I just had the, the hardest trouble with that. Uh, just the, the traversing that stage. I did so much backtracking on that one. And that, that was the first point where I started uh, to, to get a little bit frustrated uh, with the game. It, it definitely starts to get very tedious in those le- later levels because, uh, yeah, those the, the missions themselves get way... They're just scattered all the way across the, that these, these maps, which are wow. very large maps, especially by Stage 4. And one of the biggest problems with that as well is once you get to those terminals and you're actually trying to map that out, those terminals, it, it shows you a blueprint but it doesn't necessarily show you the obstacles uh, that are in those maps. So even if you think you've mapped it out as far as like mm-hmm. getting from one room to another, you may go to that room and find that you can't actually get to the other side of that through that room. You have to go back out, find another way through it, and then figure your way around. Um, mm-hmm. And it, it wastes a lot of time like tr- just trying to figure that out. And yeah, especially when you have to go all the way back once you've finished a mission to go all the way back to the terminal and, and speak. Yeah, yeah. And stage four is where I think for me, that really became a problem. At, but once you get past it, here's your fucking prize stage five, one terminal <laughs> and just a, a labyrinth of ducks to go through. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how I beat it when I was a kid. I actually legit beat this as when I was a kid one time. I rented this several times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then one time, I, I think I finally uh, really buckled down and, and beat it. And I don't know. I remember that stage five, yes. And I remember not having any fun whatsoever with it. Yeah, I just... Uh, this I never beat this one as a kid. And I, I could be pretty certain this is where it ended for me. Uh, and this is where... It just about ended for me this time around. This is where I sat it down uh, for a day or so and and concluded I was just going to look up the rest of this thing. I picked it back up, but yeah, this was uh, this was the breaking point for me this time, just about. Well, even at four, even in, in the map four, the weapons and the health and uh, the the objectives are all so far apart from each other mm-hmm. that i mean you have to really take your time you have to really plan well but you also can't do a lot of wandering because there are enough full size aliens and even some yes. other aliens in that level you're going to you're going to use all your ammo up i mean that's that map 4 was the first time uh, other than when i first started playing and i did treat it like it was contra until i was an idiot and ran out of ammo but the only time i had actual problems with ammo was starting in map 4 i really was was it it felt like every other mission i would get Get kind of to where I'm supposed to go, but yeah, I'd either hit hit a wall where I didn't see there was a wall on the mini map, or I would just run out of ammo halfway through the mission and, and have to like scrape just to get through. And unlike unlike some other games that are a little bit slower, like we played Resident Evil uh, what, last episode, and mm-hmm. and that's one where you you have a very limited amount of ammo, but you can run away from a lot of things uh, at least early on. Uh, this game you can't really run from anything. You can start trying to run, but things just just quickly get out of hand. 
and yeah. you can't like you can't jump over the regular aliens. It looks like you can, but you never will. They have tails, and, and you'll always land on the tail, and it does enough damage, which then knocks you back, which causes you to you know have to run even farther away, and then more things spawn. It just things get out of hand real, real quick in this game. And so if you run out of, of ammo at all, you're just you can just watch yourself die. And knowing that you have to go back and do all the missions again, again, unless you're playing with a bunch of save states. But it means that you've got to you can't just plan ahead for what you're doing. You kind of need to go ahead, map the whole level out on a piece of paper in front of you, put out where the mission <laughs> objectives are and, and really plan these things out effectively or play this over and over and over again, uh, which I, I wish I had that kind of time now. But I don't. But it was even with that complaint, though, I still I refused to do a bunch of save state things. I really was determined to beat these at least the full map the right way. Because I, I really did enjoy that that kind of resource management part of it as well. Uh, but there are definitely times where I think, uh, you know, due to either mm, not seeing things on the mini-map that would have been helpful, like where platforms are, uh, where where maps are, stop you from going, you know, what looks like a, a regular wall in one spot, and it looks exactly the same as the minimap, is not a regular wall. It's a full-on wall you can't get through. Mm -hmm. uh, th there's a lot of things that minimap eh, could, could, could do better, but that said, without that map, this game would have been impossible. Oh, yeah, and I, I wish uh, they would have allowed you to just pull it up anytime you wanted, but, you know, having to go back to that terminal every single time you want to pull up that map is really something... Um, and if you want to play armchair developer even more so, I, it, I think it would have been way better off if you could have just, uh, once you finish the, whatever your, the objective, if it would have just come up and been like objective complete and then right. put you back at that hub area. And that would have been so much better, but it never really actually tells you that you finished a quest. Yeah. You just kind of have to know that you've done it, which for the most part, you do, uh, but for when you're res rescuing the the prisoners, I mean, you can have several, and it doesn't keep track of how many you've you've saved. So you can you could be like, all right, I got I got everybody, and get all the way back to that terminal, and there's still one that you haven't <laughs> collected yet, <laughs> and then you got to go all the way back through that shit to mm -hmm. find that one that you missed. It's uh, it it can be kind of hard to keep track of, that, especially in those later levels. It can be hard to keep track of things. Well, and then to make matters worse, if you're impatient like like me, uh, when you get your mission, it slowly types out the mission objectives, and it'll say things like, "You need to go to room 11 and fix these three terminals," and then it shows you the map of room 11 and where the three terminals are. So you can hit start to go to where it says, like, okay, you're going to set this mission, which I did. I went to the, the to Area 11. I did the three terminals, so I thought I was done. I go back. Well, it says that the mission wasn't complete. So I watched it again, and I didn't skip it this time. And after it shows you where those three terminals are, it says, and also on map nine, mm -hmm. with these two terminals. I'm like, you dumb game. <laughs> so the fact that it doesn't tell you you finished it is a little irritating. I, I wish you could take multiple missions. I wish you could look at all the, the missions and, and say, okay, great. I know I have to go to these 17 rooms and fix these three terminals terminals and do you know just try to make it a big circuit as opposed to having to go uh, a giant loop around the whole thing to get to the objective and then all the way back to the terminal then all the way back to another objective then all the way back to the terminal which is what happens in in area four which made it so hard it wasn't doing the missions most of the missions are actually fairly easy once you get to the rooms but it's getting there uh, especially because again like any good action game the, the enemies get harder as the levels progress. So in, in the first map, you may have had one or two full-size aliens. And, and by four, they're, they're literally just falling down from the ceiling. They're filled with vents. They're everywhere. And, uh, and they take a, a good amount of firepower to kill, especially the machine gun. You're basically blowing a whole clip on a regular alien. Yeah, it, it gets uh, very unforgiving once you get to, to level four and five. Uh, but thankfully, I, I guess, uh, you know, once you get through level five, if you're expecting a, a nice big boss fight with the queen alien, <laughs> uh, you don't don't really have to worry about that at all. So you kind of I mean, it's it's basically just a cut scene uh, of you getting in this uh, large the uh, fuck. I don't know, this big ass truck or something that's got a, a flat flat end on the front of it. that You just run into the queen alien and push her into the lava. And that's it. I mean, I, I, I don't. I can't tell you how disappointed I was as a kid to to sit there and beat that game to get all the <laughs> way to the end and deal with all of that shit, especially in stage five. And then that was it. That was the ending to the game. Credits roll. I would have been angry as a child. I was relieved as an adult. Uh, I was 
I was pleased to see that that uh, that I pretty much was done when when the last stage began. But yeah, that's uh, that's common nowadays. I mean, there's a lot of of endings that are that are quick time events. Uh, Jeremy and I know that from uh, from when we played through Mercenaries Two. You know, that is uh, actually the second most disappointing ending. <laughs> I, I was actually going to mention Mercs 2 and that, that, that last boss that me and you sat through. That was a quick time event. Yes. It, uh, three button presses. But uh, the whole time it, I was just saying there, are you kidding? Are you yeah. kidding me? Is this it? But yes. And this, but it, yeah. And this was the precursor. Except uh, not even a quick, not even a button press though. No. And the Queen Alien looks so cool. I mean, this game, we, we haven't really mentioned it, but this game looks awesome. Like, it is... This game, like, yeah, it's for, nice. One of the things that, that really uh, it got me to, or drew me to it back when I was a kid, was just how realistic uh, and how gritty the game mm-hmm. looks, which was so rare back on a Super NES game. Yeah, uh, it was. You know, everything is animated so well. Uh, the aliens look awesome. Uh, the it, it's, just, it's just an awesome, dark-looking game. Yeah. And all, just there's not too many environments in, in the thing. I, I think you could probably mm-hmm. there's maybe six or seven total. But man, it, it's just uh, it looks so good just running through those levels and everything that I, I really didn't care. Yeah, and, and it sounds great too. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the you know how satisfying is it? Hear those fucking aliens fucking cry out when you fucking put the flamethrower on them. Yeah. It, it, oh. Just the sound in this game, uh, the guns sound like they've got some some real fucking heft to them. Uh, and, I mean, it's just it's it's aliens. They they nailed it. Uh, and I said before with movie tie-ins, you know, you rented those games knowing you weren't going to get something too damn good, uh, unless it was a Disney game at the time. You weren't getting something good. Uh, you weren't getting something accurate to the film. Uh, but this is uh, this is just a uh, one of the rare just 16 bit successes in my book uh, when it comes to a movie tie in. One, well, I like that it's not, it doesn't try to follow the plot of the movie. It's not like it mm. tries to become a cinematic experience. It's still mm. a really good, uh, yeah. a really good video game based on a movie. And it makes total sense for the movie that that it was based on like it, it works yes. really well but you know it's not like oh yeah here's the first part where you wake up as ripley and wander around the ship and here's the next part where you have a meeting it's like this is this is awful i can't do this uh this thankfully it's just it streamlines all the good things about alien 3 and made it a pretty good video game got a nice little uh opening uh to it as well uh, that's taken straight straight from the movie uh i thought it was it was done pretty pretty well Kind of creepy. The music, mm-hmm. everything about it, just super, super creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the music's good for the uh, the uh, the ambience. It, it feels it feels like it's very tense. Like the mu- the music isn't overly action based, but it's also not totally out of place. It's not just you know. Doo, 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 doo. I mean, yeah. it, it's good music, but it's not. Uh, you wouldn't that listen to it outside of the video game, game song that Wasn't you just it? made. Yeah, that I was thought. well. That would be one with a clown where he throws pies or something. But th- <laughs> it did not fit for Alien Three, and thankfully the music is. <laughs> <laughs> totally great for Alien 3. Uh, one of the one of the last things I want to talk about that I liked a lot in this game uh, as far as an interesting mechanic, it actually, um, I don't think it ever affected me too, too badly, but I thought it was cool, is that the, the levels are kind of persistent in some ways. So if you kill alien eggs, you've killed the alien eggs. They don't spawn back in when you come to the room. Uh, aliens still still appear, the face huggers still come on the floor, but they're less than if there were eggs in the room. Uh, but there are some missions where they, uh, along with, with welding terminals that are broken or, or pipes that are broken, it'll have you weld doors closed, and that actually makes that door stay locked and unusable for the rest of the time you're on that stage. That was a kind of a neat little thing. <laughs> Uh, and it only really mattered. There was one stage where I think you actually seal up the medic bay. So if you do that mission out of order, because normally I think it's like one of the next to last missions. But if you do it like early, you've blocked your way off to half the medicine in the level. 
And that's just yeah, kind that's of a neat, neat little mechanic. Uh, it's just, it does a lot of little things that, you know, there's there's a lot that the game could have done better as far as quality of life. Uh, little things that would have made it better for the player. But for what they were really trying, uh, even they were re- they really went for it with this game as far as like making it feel like a, you know, you were kind of just you against all of these aliens on this uh, this prison ship. It it really feels like you are alone, and it's just you against all of this stuff. Um, and little things like that persistence, and like the alien eggs and things like that, it, it makes you feel like you're you're progressing in some way, and you are stopping this this endless tide of of aliens that are just constantly coming at you. Uh, it's it's just a, a really neat little thing that very few games back then actually did. So in general. Do you think, uh, I mean, I would recommend this to people who hadn't played it before. I mean, I guess even if you don't like Aliens, it doesn't, I don't think you need to know a damn thing about the movies to enjoy this game. But I think it actually, I mean, now that it's mystically been added to my uh, Super Nintendo Classic, it's going to stay on there. I like this game. I mean, it's, I don't know if I'll play it long enough ever to get to the end, but just to play through a, a, a few, you know, a level worth of missions uh, once in a while, it actually, I really liked it. Yeah, I mean, and and I, for my complaints, uh, which which are valid complaints, uh, the jump fucking sucks. Uh, but it's still it's it's a solid Super Nintendo game. Uh, yeah, and no, you don't have to be a fan of the series. Uh, you're you're going to be thrilled if you are, because uh, it's uh, it's it's aliens through and through. Uh, it, it feels like it, looks like it, sounds like it. Um, but no, even if you're not, uh, you just want a. Uh, an action game that's not uh, exactly mindless, uh, that's not run and gun, uh, where there's a little bit of strategy involved, uh, and, and something you can just sit down and and you need some time free. Uh, you're not going to just breeze through this thing. Uh, and something you can dedicate a few hours to, then yeah, this would be a, a, a perfect game to pick up one weekend and play through. Yeah, and I'd, I'd totally recommend it mine, myself. I, I know it's... Uh, game based a 16-bit game based on a movie which is usually just a horror story Mm -hmm. but this is uh it it holds up it's still a fun game you know like i said as long as you don't go in expecting contra or something like that uh then you it's a really fun fun game but you know i I know we haven't really talked about it much if you don't want all of that uh you know if, if the whole uh terminal thing sounds stupid if the whole running through these uh persistent levels kind of sounds dumb uh, pick up the Genesis version. Uh, it's not too bad. Uh, it's it's very like we said, arcadey. It it just takes that one idea from the Super NES game and runs with it for the whole game. I mean, that's all. It, basically, it's one mission uh, from one, the Super Nintendo game done over and over and over again. And uh, it's it's definitely more of an action style game. It's faster paced than the uh, Super NES game. So you know, it's it's not a, a great game. I, I would not say it's it's even close to the Super NES game as far as just how fun it is. But uh, if you're wanting an Aliens game that is a more fast-paced, more arcade-style action game than the Genesis version, is it, you could do a lot worse. And actually, this is one of the few games that we actually had covered on Retrovania.net uh, YouTube videos. One of the earliest ones we did, I think, you did, Jeremy, was on, uh, was on Alien 3. So I will link to that. Uh, on our Twitter and on Facebook, just so people can see some of the footage of the game. I, I sometimes I don't know if we ever described these very well, but I think we did okay on this one. Uh, but you can actually see it as well, and kind of see what the missions are like, and, and also see how much better our new videos are than the old ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was like the, the second or third one I ever made. Um, I literally recording the audio off of my phone and and editing the video on my phone as well. So uh, don't don't expect anything amazing. It'll just be nice to see it uh, without having to, yeah, to just yeah. find a, a video of it online while you listen to the podcast, which is what I recommend everyone do if you really mm-hmm. want to see the game. Uh, watch a long play of that game while listening to our audio. Of course, that's what everyone should do, right? That's, the, that's a smart call. Game over, man. We did attempt to have George, who goes by at Captain Godbody on Twitter, uh, who recommended the game, kind of come on and talk to us about the game. Uh, But we had some uh, technical issues that made that impossible. So him and I just had a direct conversation about this game and the Genesis game. Uh, And so here's some clips from that where he has his insight because he played more of the Genesis game than any of us did. Growing up, I had the Genesis game and played through it then. And then I I just played them both because I don't really have anything to do with my time. Well, I played enough of the Genesis version to realize that it's, 
I mean, it's good for what it was. It's it's an arcadey game. It's definitely it's the first of the two games that was made. So they took the idea of the the what the Genesis and it was an Amiga game as well and took that concept and built it out for the Super Nintendo one because every game for the Super Nintendo and Genesis had the same game had to be different somehow uh, for for a short period of time. Yeah, I I remember being playing the Sega one and being really confused because. I didn't know the Alien 3 had, um, like, a really, really terrible production, like, the movie, as far as the movie goes. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I played the Sega game after seeing the movie, I wondered why, like, there were dead cows everywhere and stuff, and that was part of, like, a script they threw out or something. So I guess the Sega game was based on a script they, they didn't use for the movie, but that's fine. You know, I don't think there's any dead cows in the uh, the Super Nintendo one. I didn't miss a slaughterhouse, but... There are not. There are definitely not dead cows in the Super Nintendo one. Um, plenty of aliens and plenty of yeah. <laughs> plenty of furnace rooms and outdoor rooms and uh, medic rooms, but, but no uh, no dead cows. I mean, I, I always wanted to play the Super Nintendo one. I just didn't have a Super Nintendo at the time. I could tell just by looking at it, I probably would have enjoyed that one more. I mean, having played it now... I thought it was really cool. It's just a little bit longer than I think it needed to be. Yeah, that's something we kind of came to the conclusion too. It's it's a little longer than it needs to be. Uh, basically, after about um, you know, there's there's six sets of missions, so six different overall levels uh, with a bunch of different mini missions in between. And it seems like four is kind of where it it tapped out. Where we really we really liked the game. It was fun, but after about map four. We had seen what there was to see. It was it was okay to move on, and, and then starting with uh, with mission five really just became uh, climb through air ducts. The game. Yeah, and it wasn't really broken up by traditional boss battles or anything like that. I mean, you had like the giant aliens. Yeah, the mother aliens. There wasn't anything like I don't know. It just I'm used to playing those games where there's like a queen. <laughs> um, Right, yeah, you know, you fully expect a, a real boss. You expect the queen fight, and and the reason even is queen, like monster design, and there's a yeah. queen. Uh, you know, they've they bothered animating it, but you just watch a cutscene with it. Like you don't actually yeah. get to fight it at all. And I fully expected, even if it wasn't the very end of the game, I expected the last set of missions to have something involving like a real boss battle. I mean, she gets pushed pushed into the the lava with the that bulldozer, whatever you want to call it. And I was shocked that they they kept the whole Ripley dying thing in it because that doesn't happen in the Sega game. Um, at the end of the Sega game, it's like happily ever after. Yeah. Really <laughs> yeah, it's definitely like, hey, you saved everybody. Good job. So it's cool that you know you see Ripley falling into the lava with the the alien coming out of her. Even though I, I'm not sure I picked up on any parts in the game itself that told you that she had one in her, but they got a lot of the. I don't want to say that they, I mean, as far as like capturing the, the feelings of these games, obviously Alien Isolation is the the best they've done, but Alien 3 is pretty close with just keeping the, I don't know, it felt like the movie, it had the same kind of color scheme, it was claustrophobic. I would say that maybe that the Sega game was a little bit more tense just because you only had like, what was it, three minutes? And then it was all over, and then everybody died. Well, that's true. There was definitely a time limit in the Sega game. It, it, it had uh, one of the things I, ne- I generally don't like is a time limit or a, a time, like a time trial kind of thing. I'm not normally a fan, but in this kind of game, it makes sense. So, do you recommend either the Genesis or the Super Nintendo game uh, to someone who hadn't played them before? Like I played it now, really for the first time um, for this, the, the Super Nintendo version. It's definitely probably the best of the Retro Aliens games. I know we talked about um, doing Alien Resurrection, and that was... Uh, I did give that a little bit of a, a try recently. Um, I'm happier we went with Alien 3 for Super Nintendo instead. Uh, it's something I would definitely play again. Um, maybe not all the way to the end, because... You know, about halfway through three quarters, it's about enough. <laughs> yeah, I think once you hit once you hit area four, they introduce the mother aliens. Uh, you can move on to something else, and and that's exactly what I'd recommend for most people. But that's still going to keep you busy for a while. So, uh, thank you for the recommendation. We definitely uh, appreciated it, and uh, and thanks for listening to the show. Thank you.
There has been, since our last episode, a game has come out that I've pushed very strongly on our social media presence. Uh, the new Bubsy has arrived, and I have not bought it. I kind of thought it was just a funny idea, and then uh, I actually decided their Twitter account for Bubsy was the best thing that's ever occurred. Uh, and so I was <laughs> constantly retweeting it and, and responding to it, and now I think they friended us, which is nice. Um, but I think we need to go back and look at the original Bubsy. Uh, for a Super Nintendo and Genesis. I think they're the exact same game. I don't think you need to compare them. Uh, but just, just to see, did this need to come back? Because my instant thought when they announced it was why. But you know, it's been a long time since I've even played a Bubsy, uh, and I'm going to give it a shot. I think we need to look at Bubsy for the next episode. Uh, I'm going to take full blame that this is occurring. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to, because I think we probably already know the answer to this. But I, it'll be it'll be kind of fun to go back to it. I remember uh, going and renting it uh, as a kid because, you know, it was it was one of those games that a lot of its marketing was. This is a 16 meg uh, game for the, the Super NES, which back then, you know, if you if it was like 16 megs on the box, you know, it was going to be amazing. Uh, so I it. It was not, but I'm looking forward to going back and, and maybe having a little bit more patience with it uh, because I did not as a kid. So everyone get excited. We're going to revisit Bubsy, the 16-bit cat super mascot that really needed to come back. And, and maybe we'll, maybe depending on how much I enjoy playing this, I'll, I'll get the new one and talk about that for a few minutes at the end as well. But until then, please check us out on Retrovania.net, on Twitter at Retrovania.net, on Facebook at Retrovania.net, and on Instagram at Retrovania.net, where I've decided I'm just going to take pictures of random things in my house and put them on our Instagram. <laughs> That's <laughs> a riveting Instagram. Uh, but thankfully, most of my house is filled with old video game garbage, so it actually kind of makes sense. So yeah, that's where you can find us, and we will see you next time. 